Shout out to everyone over here for purchasing merch since the last video to enter this giveaway. This giveaway is pretty much ending by the end of this month. We got about like, I think eight days. So, so if you guys want to enter to win some Milwaukee stuff, uh, you know, a Bluetooth speaker, a retrofit kit, and a couple other cool little goodies, make sure to check out that Natty Performance link down below. Cop anything from the store and you'll also be shot in the next video. And your name's also going to be featured on the Natty Performance plaque. So uh, don't miss that. But yeah, guys, anywho, let's go ahead and get into the video. What's up, guys? Welcome back. So welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to be trying to get the E91 M3 running and driving. So now that we're back, guys, basically, I want to get this thing running and driving. I want to be able to move this thing inside and outside the garage. I want to be able to get the KW suspension that we have on the E90 M3 and the beautiful Apex wheels onto this car as soon as possible. Now, in terms of getting this bad boy painted completely orange, I just realized within the budget of still trying to get an R8 by the end of this year and getting this bodywork and paint all sorted like in the near future, um, maybe nearly impossible. Just because if I want to get a proper paint job and a proper bodywork done to this car, we're talking a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot. Like, I don't know. I mean, I might get lucky and get quotes as low as five grand altogether, or I could get up there around 10 to 15,000 for a proper paint and bodywork done to this car. We still need to change both quarter panels out and we still need to paint the entire car inside out. What I mean inside out, I pretty much just mean door jams, inner doors, you know, outer doors, all that stuff. So all that stuff to get painted is a lot of money. And honestly, guys, I really want to achieve the dream by the end of this year to get an Audi R8. So that all being said, the main thing I want to go ahead and do is just get this thing to be running and driving. Because if we get this thing running and driving, at least move it inside the garage, outside the garage, get it moved around, start doing some major things to the car and just start getting everything dialed in. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, this motor was running and driving from the car that I pulled it out of. So I'm in hopes that it's pretty much a good running and driving engine. The main things I want to go ahead and just make sure is all the smog stuff compliant because we are going to have to take this stuff for a bar sticker exam. I do want to get the original and official sticker um, for a smog check on this car to make this a legal E91 M3 build. So I do need to make sure all the emission stuff is on the car. And also I do want to make sure we clean up as much things as possible and replace as much things as possible before reassembling this car. Now in terms of the valve cover guys, uh, the valve cover is honestly needs to get removed and replaced. Honestly, both of them need to get removed and replaced. I was going to go ahead and get them resurfaced or at least, you know, do the same thing I did on the E90 M3, but I'm considering on just replacing them just because they have a lot of like wear and tear and a lot of cracks on it. And I don't know if these are going to last a lifetime because with this car, I do want to pretty much replace everything to last pretty much as long as possible. Over here, as you guys can see, this part is shiny because I pretty much got this piece removed. I cleaned it up. I replaced the thermostat, the water pump. I went ahead and actually put brand new hoses as well. These are all from Gates. So shout out to Gates for sending me out these products. So you pretty much got the cooling system sorted out. And I did go ahead and remove the alternator from this car, which is 110,000 miles. And I transferred over to the E90, which has 110,000 miles. I'm trying to get stuff sorted on the E90 M3. And then I'm also trying to upgrade parts on this. So whatever the E90 M3 needs, I'm removing it off this car, putting on that car. And I'm either ordering new parts or used parts that is almost in mid condition for this one. Cause you guys know we're keeping this bad boy. We need to be absolutely perfect. So all that being said, I'm going to throw you guys into past store when I went for a shopping haul to get everything I need to get this thing pretty much running. So to get it running guys, we had pretty much had to go on a road trip using the i3 to get everything we need to actually get it running. Fluids and everything, um, including an alternator. So we went to Specialized German, after Specialized German, we went to Pick and Pull, after Pick and Pull, we went to the DMV, and then we went to another Pick and Pull, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, just cruising right now. Then we actually went to an I pull, you pull, found this little cute little chihuahua. Anywho, long story short, we made it back home, and this car is super convenient. It cost me absolutely nothing to do this entire parts run, and, uh, Look how sick it is. It fits the pack out, fits everything I need to get the job done. So I absolutely love this car. But yeah, let me show you guys what we got. And now that we're finally home, this is what I ended up picking up today. Uh, just pretty much going to a bunch of different places. This alternator is actually going to be for this car. I took the alternator out of this car and actually put it into the E90 M3. I was going to end up picking up a new alternator um, from BMW, mainly because, again, with this build, I'm trying to go all out. Um, but then I found out an alternator from BMW is like 500 bucks, and I'm like, ooh, that is a lot of money. So I found the next best thing, which is the lowest mileage alternator I can find on the internet, and it was local too. So this one has 42,000 miles on it. That's pretty low. Came off of a 2012 BMW M3, um, which is four years newer too. So this one should have a lot of life in it. This one should be good. And for a fraction of the price, $110, actually 120 I think that's an absolute killer deal. I had to do a little bit of negotiating for that price, but absolutely amazing. Ended up selling my clock spring that came originally with my E91 and that was super unfortunate. So I had to get another clock spring. I didn't know there was a little button difference right over here. Um, as you guys can see, that's for the rear windshield wiper. So since we are building a wagon build, I want everything to work 
on this car like OEM. I want it to be an M3, but also function like a wagon, because how sick is that? This one does need a little bit of cleaning, but uh, everything looks pretty good on here, which I'm pretty stoked about. We ended up picking up from pick and pull. We ended up going to three different pick and pulls, and I finally got this door handle. This was actually from my I pull, you pull. This is a keyless entry door handle, um, so that is great. We'll get that repainted once we actually repaint the car. For now, at least we can test out our keyless entry and stuff like that. This taillight's actually gonna be for our E90 M3. Um, this is a very mint taillight. My taillight, for some reason, is completely out. The module doesn't work, the taillight doesn't work, and the taillight's in terrible shape. So that, we ended up picking up for $22, 15 bucks, $60, $110, not too shabby. We ended up doing the registration as well for the E90 M3. Just to give you guys a little bit of a heads up, do not miss your registration payment. I missed it by three days, ended up paying a late fee, and on top of that, I actually had to go to a DMV office and pay their fee of additional $50. So the original registration was 150, then after the late fees ended up being 185, and after the DMV fees ended up being 235. I could have just paid 155 on the internet the convenient way, but I ended up being lazy, I forgot about it, and uh, long story short, had to spend an extra $75 for no reason. So uh, that's a lie if you live and you learn. I didn't think it actually gets that ugly at just missing your uh, registration payment by three days, but I guess it is what it is. Now for the holy grail, we finally ended up picking up our 10W60 oil, picked up nine quarts of this stuff. Oh my God, guys, $115 or $120 for this stuff. Very, very, very expensive. But anyways, this is the right oil to get for the car and I definitely want to treat it right. So I'm super happy with that. And we ended up getting up some BMW coolant as well because we don't want to put anything else other than the best stuff into this E91 M3 build. I am super stoked for this guy. But just a quick little pause for today's sponsor, which is Simply Carbon Fiber. So shout out to Simply Carbon Fiber for sponsoring this video. They're going to help fund this build. But at the same time, they got a crazy good deal for you guys because they're bringing up to 70 percent off their entire store so that's pretty insane so for those of you guys who've been wanting this minimalistic wallet that i use on a day-to-day -day basis that pretty much you know holds all your cars super clean super simple and also holds some cash in the back i actually have a receipt over here as well because i'm gonna have to return something pretty soon here uh, but yeah it does everything you pretty much need in a very clean and minimalistic wallet this is a full carbon fiber wallet which looks super good they even have the regular carbon fiber wallet i have the forge one over here the regular carbon fiber one and we also have uh this watch bump from simply carbon fiber it looks absolutely stunning like check Check that out guys everything is up to 70% off the Black Friday sale and I believe it actually ends on the 25th so that's why I'm actually saying it now so you guys technically have three days so don't miss it and now that we're back you guys can see that with the low mileage alternator and pretty much everything else that we're replacing on this car it should be a pretty much amazing running car by the end of this I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like nor you should have removed this you should remove that you should have polished this you should have polished that with the magnitude of this build guys just getting it running and driving and just making it operate and legal is my number one priority right now and then everything else because it's a car we're keeping we're going to try to upgrade every little thing little by little and we are going to be dropping the subframe once again to get the raw bearings done at a professional shop so do not worry guys everything is going to be taken care of on this motor just as for now uh we have no registration nothing for this car to actually be legally driven i want to get this thing legal i want to get it driving i want to be able to use this car and move this car especially if we end up getting the r8 because i don't want this thing just sitting here so long story short we need to get this thing running and driving so without further ado let's go ahead back it out a little bit and just start at least detailing the front of the engine make it look a lot better clean up that suffering and then start assembling this motor because i am stoked to start putting the fluids in here hopefully hopefully a good motor and proper wiring to make this all happen yeah so um fingers crossed Guys, I'm not gonna lie, this stuff did some good work. Basically, all this stuff that had gunk on it basically looks a lot new, and I'm sure if I put a few more layers, it'll come out a lot more cleaner, but considering I have half a can, and uh, the bottom is looking really shiny and good, uh, I do wanna knock out this top section over here, probably a little bit later again. Today, I just pretty much wanna get pretty much most of these stuff assembled in the front. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of other things that I assemble that's gonna be cleaning anyways, so when the time comes, I'm gonna spray some more of this stuff and then use a power washer, and this front engine bay is gonna look a lot better. I mean, honestly, if I had a brushing tool as well guys this thing does work like, look how clean it is just with this little bad boy right here the next thing i want to go ahead and install is the alternator just because it's gonna be a lot easier to install before we install everything else so we have our two cables right over here let's just go ahead and install our alternator
now that we pretty much got the both belts on there and the alternator on there, um, I think it's time to start assembling the radiator condenser and all the other stuff in the front end so we can start putting in the fluids. This is some exciting stuff, guys. I am not gonna lie, that bottle honestly did some crazy damage in terms of cleaning this engine. And I'm honestly thinking about using the rest of that can and getting another can later because wow, that made such a difference. The only thing I don't really like doing is in my garage, putting a bunch of water and then especially that's in my workspace as well. I can't really push out the car right now because the car is not drivable and then I won't be able to push it back in the garage on my own, unfortunately. I miss the homies when they used to live nearby. That was super nice and convenient. But for now, I'm honestly just gonna go ahead and start stopping on the radiator condenser, the cooling, all that good stuff. And then down the road, honestly, I'm probably just gonna clean the undercarriage and clean the subframe and stuff like that. Cause again, we're gonna have to drop the subframe for rod bearings. We're gonna have to remove the valve covers. We're gonna have to clean the top end, the bottom end. Anyways, at least the front of the engine right now is looking absolutely gorgeous. So this is that moment guys, we got everything fully assembled. Unfortunately, this OBD port bracket kind of broke, so you will have to get another one of those. Not a big deal, even though I hate doing that part. Now the question is guys, <laughs> does the hood latches work? Now thankfully, I actually had uh, the original hood latches that came on the wagon because the M3 ones, the tabs are broken. And once you actually install all of this, it's kind of a pain in the butt to actually get this uninstalled once you have the headlight, the bumper, and all that kind of stuff. So thankfully, I actually kept this piece. It is mounted perfectly, looking really good. So now moment of truth, Will it latch? That's the first thing. And then second thing, oh, number one problem right there. What is going on here? So putting it, all right, so it's hitting this. What is that? Why is that like, huh? All right, I'm gonna have to figure out why that's hitting right over here. Um, guys, I am the most confused I have ever been. So this is my E90 M3 and this is this one. So as you guys can see, this is supposed to be flipped the other way around. My question is, how and when did it actually switch over like that? Because I actually didn't even touch this. I pretty much removed the hinges and removed the entire hood as you guys see it. I didn't touch anything on the hood. So originally the hood was latched. What I'm trying to understand is how, is somebody playing a game with me? Is one of my friends actually switched this around because I don't understand how this could have been. But anyways, easy fix. Let's just go ahead, swap that over and test fit it. And now that that's flipped around, moment of truth, will it shut? Fingers crossed guys. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, buddy, that's what I'm talking about. Hood latches on this side, like perfect. Hood latches on this side, perfectly. Now looking over here, 
Um, that is looking pretty dang perfect. I'm not gonna lie, this side's perfect. This side is, nah, not perfect at all. So we do have to do some adjustments uh, to make this side work. Not a big deal, as long as it's latched. The question is, does our hood latch work? Because if it doesn't, this is gonna be a nightmare trying to get this thing open. Three, two, one. Oh, that's what I'm talking about, guys. That's super satisfying. We had to remove that cable and reinstall, and the fact that it worked, oh yes, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just install these guys that actually hold the radiator in place. We went ahead and connected the brand new radiator hose over here. This one, I actually used the original one. There's nothing wrong with this one, and I couldn't get it off the radiator, so I decided to just reuse it, because, I mean, it's super easy. I love the new belt. That looks super dope right there as well. But yeah, I think, honestly, we're at the point where we can start putting fluids so we can turn this thing over pretty soon here. So I think let's just go ahead and uh, bleed everything, add some new fluids. This is gonna be pretty sick, guys. And at this point, guys, I'm actually working on the carpets in the center console first, mainly because it is the middle of the night and I forgot I need a couple more things from Walmart, uh, which we'll get tomorrow morning for the most part. Uh, but as for now, the carpets went in very, very smoothly and the center console was very stressful because honestly, when removing everything and reinstalling everything, sometimes things just don't fit, but I'm super happy everything did fit. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and head to Walmart as of this point. We got our uh, windshield washer fluid, our you know AC thing, our distilled water. We're ready to go. And now that we're finally home, guys, this is what pretty much two hundred dollars of non-reusable stuff looks like. <laughs> We got our oil filter and seals right here. We have all the oil that we need. We have two coolant jugs. We have some distilled water for also the coolant mixture. And then we also have some refrigerant for the AC. We pretty much got everything we need over here to get all the fluids going on this car. I actually also have some windshield wiper fluid because I do want to test out that tank to make sure I got everything routed properly. I did also mess with this a little bit last night to make sure that's sitting properly. And I think that's the way it's supposed to be sitting because you can technically adjust it any way you want. You can actually raise this a little bit, but I think that's how it's supposed to be. And I, I just, I that looks normal to me. You guys can let me know down below if that looks a little bit off to you guys, but that looks normal to me, so that's what I went ahead and did. But yeah, guys, super stoked at how this build is coming along. I mean, the interior, oh, I don't even know if I showed you guys the interior. The interior is looking so good. <laughs> we have the beautiful carbon fiber trim here. We have all the buttons in good working condition right there. The CIC controller in mint shape right there. And then we also have the MBT Evo kind of just sitting out there because we do need to do some coding to get Apple CarPlay to work on there. But yeah, guys, this is uh, this build's really coming together, and I'm just super happy to see less wires popping up. I think we're going to try to start assembling the interior hopefully here in the near future. But obviously in the meantime, I do want to get all the fluids situated on this car. Now it doesn't have an exhaust system either. So it's going to be stupid loud. It's going to sound like a tractor or whatever the heck you call it, a naturally sounding V8. But again, if we can at least start this car up and be able to move it, that is the absolute goal right now. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get that oil change done, get that coolant flush done and go ahead and just put in all the other fluids that we need. Guys, I was about to use my jack to jack up the front, and uh, I just realized quick jacks is so much easier. I mean, of course I have them, so why not use them? And I'm not gonna lie, that's gonna make it super easy to actually do everything in the undercarriage. And at the same time, when I start up the car, it's not gonna be too close to the ground, which means it's not gonna be reflecting heat too much to where it's gonna damage anything if we leave the car running for a little bit. Because as you guys know, we have no exhaust right now, and I don't wanna damage anything. So this amount of distance from the ground is definitely healthy distance. So uh, yeah, I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like, Nor, come on, if you're trying to make a perfect E91, you need to clean all that. I do plan on cleaning all that, guys. When I get this thing to the shop and they remove the subframe to work on the raw bearings, I'm gonna be trying to clean the oil plan, clean the subframe when it's off the car, so do not worry, guys. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get back to it.
All right, guys, so uh, moment of truth. My brother's actually behind the camera. He came for the best moment ever, which is the first startup of our E91 M3. The question is, did we do the wiring good? And uh, hopefully everything, we did good with the mechanical side Theoretically. Well. Theoretically, everything is gravy in the Navy, you know what I mean? So I'm pretty excited, first startup. I'm actually gonna get, get the car back up in the air because it's straight piped. There's no exhaust in the car right now, so it's gonna be stupid loud. Um, the only thing is we just wanna hear it start over. We have oil, we have coolant. Um, I'm gonna bleed the coins in a little bit once the car runs for a little bit, and then, uh, woo, I am Whoa, scared. Dude, I'm, huh? I'm stressed out. <laughs> I'm stressed out too. I mean, I would stand over there because, I mean, there's, uh, the exhaust is pretty much here. It's gonna dump right here, basically, underneath the so car. So just stand All this, on the other side, okay. yeah. And this is moment of truth, guys. Like, I, I swear to God, this doesn't work. <laughs> All right, you, love, you ready, bro? I'm ready, give me a second. Let me get in a position. We're in neutral. Keyless entry, by the way. We retrofitted keyless entry, so if this also works, it means that keyless entry works as well. <laughs> Three, two, one. Bro, it was like it was like hesitating, 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 and it made it. All right, ready for a quick startup, right? Actually, okay. So now that it started up, I have more faith. Now, honestly, it's gonna start up with a lot of weird noises because there's no power steering. So let's go ahead and top off the power steering as well to make sure we got all the fluids going. Um, but it starts. That's Don't crazy. That. That's that V8 power, bro. <laughs> oh, it's it smells. Bro, like it's, it's funny how we both pulled up in our i3s. We got i3s, and we're over here working on a V8. <laughs> A V8, man. It works, though. <laughs> it works. I was a little bit hesitant in the beginning. Uh, yeah, me too. I was a little worried. I'm not going to lie. Dang, we have no... It's actually smoking in here, too. Mm. Yeah, there's no fluid, so... We got to we gotta use the best of the best. I love the CHF. This is the best fluid to use, honestly, for your power steering. Pretty sure... Yeah, power steering fluid. I just want to make sure to double check uh, before we ruin something, but... So far, so good, guys. In terms of oil leaks and in terms of coolant leaks, I'm not seeing any. I am seeing a little bit of smoke. You seen that? Yeah. I think it's like just leftover oil that we dumped. We definitely need to put in more fluids, but right now it's kind of capped off. I think we need to turn the steering wheel for the fluids to kind of move. Uh, so my brother's gonna hop in. We're just gonna go ahead and do this real quick and then uh, we'll get back to y'all in a second. All right guys, so I got the pump off the other M3, um, the, the, obviously the donor car. Unfortunately, it does require a bracket that we need to weld onto here. So we'll do that in a little bit, but at, for just testing purposes, I just wanna hear it, make sure it runs perfectly. Um, this is I think the last mechanical thing other than like the O2 sensors for the catalytic converters. I'm pretty sure we can run the car without actual O2 sensors like plugged in because people have down pipes all the time um so we should be fine on that let's just go ahead and connect this and then uh just hear how it sounds because this is pretty exciting i'm not gonna lie we also put in power steering fluids so that's all hooked up now leave it like over here or something should be good to go <laughs> it's just, it's just silly. that that we should just put some duct tape <laughs> <in> here. <laughs> yeah. i don't know why you're asking me i, mean. I know right? i don't know you ready <laughs> ready So loud. It sounds like a like a what's it called like a cammed Mustang or a oh Corvette. My goodness, man. That's a V8, bro. <laughs> you smell that? Yeah, that's that's normal though. That's normal. <sighs> Real quick, I think I'm actually gonna try to get that bracket welded up. So without further ado, let me go ahead and deweld the bracket, and we'll come back and weld on the bracket just so we have everything else pretty much sorted, and then. Honestly, might have to, I don't know, guys. We'll see. Might have to do some more things. My brother did come over. Um, we got a lot of stuff done, so I was thinking about chilling for a little bit, but kind of exciting stuff. I'm only trying to knock out a few more things. <laughs>
as you guys can see, we got the pump mounted like OEM. It's looking really good, super happy with that. Now as for this guy right over here, this is gonna be connected to the fender light, uh, the side marker. And uh, basically, if you accidentally push this in at any time, it's gonna fall down here and you'll never be able to get to it unless you actually get to the fender, like removing the whole fender. So what we're gonna do is an OEM method from the factory, how it should have been, which is basically putting this tab right over here. We're gonna use the OEM tape and just pretty much route that right there. So even if it falls out, you can fish down, bring it back up and connect your, uh, your side marker. That's literally how it's supposed to be from the factory. Put it right there. Oof, that is what I'm talking about. And now the cable's gonna be there forever. That's what I'm <laughs> talking about. It's all about the details. And uh, all I'm saying is, with this car, guys, we're giving it 110%, and I really hope everything works out. I mean, the fact that it started up in this video is the greatest relief. That means not only the key programming worked, not only the, com the, the, the computers that we're putting to this car all are in sync with the cast DME and everything, not only did the engine wiring and everything get sorted properly, and also just the, all the extra wiring that we did and the engine and the transmission, everything worked together for that first startup. So that's why it's a very, very satisfying feeling because uh, cars literally just don't start for the, for the stupidest reasons. And that uh, could have been a million things, even just the key not being recognized. And uh, thankfully it did start, which means we did everything right the first time, which is just super satisfying. Now anyways, now that we got this pump situated, um, that is really, really, really good. Like I didn't know I was actually gonna do that today. So I'm super happy about that. I think me and my brother are in a little bit of a spree of getting things done today. So uh, I think we wanna put on the exhaust. So we can actually start this thing up and move it properly. Um, that is a long shot. I don't know if I'm actually gonna put on the exhaust today because we need to weld up a couple brackets to the rear but we're gonna try our best. So without further ado, let's go ahead and weld up some brackets in the rear and uh, let's try to make this happen. All right guys, so these are the four um, welding points that we actually need to actually weld the, the, the exhaust onto the car. Um, unfortunately, this car does not have that because uh, this car didn't have a quad exhaust. So we pretty much cut it off of the M3 and now we're just gonna go ahead and just weld that up on both sides. I'm gonna try to put as much welds as possible because who really cares, no one's gonna see the welds. All that's important is as long as it holds up the exhaust system, that's all that's gonna matter. And uh, honestly, once we take it out of the exhaust shop as well, they're gonna chop off that muffler because we have an aftermarket muffler. We're gonna put the stock muffler back on because we need to try to pass state emissions. And we're trying to get this car certified as a V8 328 legally um, to make it a legal E91 M3, which is gonna be pretty insane. And just like that guys, we are at the end of the video and I am so, so, so happy with the progress we've made on this car. I cannot believe the car starts up. Now, unfortunately, I tried giving the car a second startup after we put up all the heat shielding and unfortunately, it doesn't want to start anymore. And I think the reason for that is because we don't actually have the O2 sensors connected. I think you still have to have the O2 sensors connected even if you have down pipes. Like I think that's why even down pipes have O2 sensor um, holes in them. So I think we need to at least plug in the exhaust system. Um, so hopefully we'll be doing that hopefully in an upcoming video probably even the next video and then we're gonna try to even swap out the suspension pretty quick here too because we got some kw suspension and uh, i i need i want to put that on the car we even have some apex wheels that we need to put on the car so a lot of sick things coming soon i cannot wait to see it on this build this car should be driving here pretty soon we need to throw in the seats we need to start assembling the interior the car needs to feel like a real full-blown e91 m3 and it's coming together guys coming together way faster than i expected and i'm just super hyped for it so if you guys are excited to see the next episode of this e91 m3 become a reality make sure to smash that like button don't forget to enter the giveaway do not forget to check out simply carbon fire black friday special again 70 percent off their entire store i've never even done that on my personal store so that's a good deal without further ado guys i love y'all so much remember to stay humble i'll see you on the next one peace out